listening to Overwatch League Daily, your daily source for Overwatch League news, scores, and more. Here's your host, Kicked Tripod. Good morning, Overwatch League fans, and this is your Overwatch League Daily episode for March 8th, 2018. Today, I'm joined by professional baseball player and esports entrepreneur Trevor May to discuss professionalism in Overwatch League. But first, we did have some news. The London Spitfire have parted ways with Coach Bishop, but they didn't cite any particular reason for their decision. It has been reported by Rod Slasher Breslow that the decision was made at least in part on the request of players, uh, per his sources. The London Spitfire finished third in the standings after Stage 1, and won the Stage 1 playoffs. Also in the news, Shanghai Dragons coach U4 has stepped down as head coach. U4 has had a very controversial time in Overwatch League. In January, he was fined just over $9,000 for account sharing and approaching players through improper communication channels. South Korean coach Kong will fill in as head coach as the Dragons look for a permanent replacement. Lastly, the Shanghai Dragons announced that Dia has left for China for a family emergency. He's expected to miss both matches this week. That's it for the news. Let's go to the scoreboard brought to you by patreon.com slash OWL daily show. For the first match of the week, the Shanghai Dragons continue to struggle getting their first W in the win column, while the Seoul Dynasty seem to have addressed most of their stage one woes. Without Dia, the Dragons struggled against Seoul, losing the series 3-1. Their one-map win comes on an impressive full hold on King's Row. For the second match of the evening, we have the San Francisco Shock going up against the Dallas Fuel. The Fuel have struggled on and off the stage to find their footing in Overwatch League. Between suspensions, new player signings, and a different strategy than we've seen pre-Overwatch League, The Fuel seemed to be a shadow of their former selves. In a decisive fashion, the San Francisco Shock would defeat the Fuel three maps to zero with the tie on Volskaya Industries. For the final match of the evening, it was the battle for Los Angeles as the Gladiators take on the Valiant. The teams have met twice before, once in the preseason and once in Stage 1. Both of those went the way of the Valiant, but that was in a different meta and without the addition of Fissure. In a surprising display, the Gladiators would defeat the Valiant four to zero but the results don't show how close this match truly was. Both Watchpoint Gibraltar and Hanamura went at least three rounds. That's it for the scoreboard. Here's my interview with Trevor May about professionalism in esports. Before we get started, there are a couple of things I I wanted to mention. First, uh, I apologize. I forgot to hit the record button on the video. So... Instead of getting to either see highlights from yesterday or the webcams from the interview, uh, you get to look at this nice, shiny logo. Sorry about that. Won't happen again, I hope. The other thing is that we did have a connection dip out uh, in the middle of the interview. Uh, I tried to clean it up as best as I can, but if there's a little bit of awkwardness there, you know why. The connection dropped. That's it. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, look at the interview with Trevor. So, Trevor, let's let's maybe start by discussing some of the differences, uh, if there honestly, if there are any, between being a professional athlete like yourself, uh, or someone who might be playing in uh, Overwatch League, and uh, kind of from the, the perspective of how you are to conduct yourself during games. Then there's team sponsored events. Then you have like your own social media, and then your own personal stream. Like, like what are, where. Where's that delineation for for you as a professional athlete? Um, I've been, I've asked this question historically like this. Uh, the weird thing about a lot of these guys who kind of went from the streaming playing in the way that this uh, Overwatch's professional scene was before developing them name themselves kind of in a social media type way on twitch or on uh or on twitter or or even on youtube right is where they were kind of developing their notoriety not in the context of being in a professional in the league um made it so they developed this social media persona meme like memes are fine constantly and like goofiness is fine all the time way 
uh, to create their presence on the internet. And then, then they were told to go and now be super professional and know when you're supposed to be that goofy memeiness and when you're supposed to be uh, a consummate professional. And uh, uh, so they, they, and, and, and uh, uh, for me, every, we're all, we've all been playing kind of behind the scenes. So the, the big thing in baseball, big value for us, uh, uh, or a big leverage point for me specifically is starting to develop that public, um, kind of transparent uh, a life um, that people can see and, and hear about and like what our lives are like every day because there's no cameras in the clubhouse. There's no cameras in the... Uh, there are becoming more and more, but like we don't tweet everything we're doing and like when we're doing our craft, everything isn't being broadcast all the time, which is what happening when these guys are playing games, they are always being watched. Like they never play games where no one's watching them. And even if it's scrims, someone's watching them play scrims. So like they're always playing for somebody. Um, and and uh, uh, it, it's really hard to distinguish when when you're your goof around self and when you're your super uh, super um, like competitive professional self. And, and we've seen like some guys not think about uh, uh, not be able to contextualize the fact that they're in a professional setting even when they're streaming. They have there's a certain lines, there's certain lines they should not cross anymore. Um, and they were questionable before. And now they're very, very. Now there's actual uh, governing body giving them consequences. So um, it's a lot of that is the same thing. We I represent the Minnesota Twins, and then and I conversely represent Major League Baseball in general. And then you know we are the our romantic emotional way we say it is we we represent the game of baseball. Everyone playing it, we play it the right way, you know. And then we that's when people talk about pimping home runs and you know, showing guys up when you strike them out, all that kind of stuff. And that's, a, that's been a conversation for 40, 50 years now. Uh, all that stuff is still, it's just like a feel type thing. And it's always being talked about always, but it's really fun to talk about for people in the media, but it's just, it, every situation has to be taken into context. Like, is this who I'm representing right now? And then what consequences are going to be to my actions? And for me, I just kind of stay at the very safe, uh, uh, I do this. I'm going to have no consequences side of the spectrum. Guys like to toe the line a little bit more um, and and guys are seeing consequences happen to them, like in the Overwatch League. And just before we go any further, I want to make sure that that we're very clear. We do not have copies of uh, player contracts or code of conduct stuff besides what's been out on the block. So uh, Mm -hmm. we're, we're drawing parallels from professional sports uh, with some assumptions that, these contracts are very similarly structured to professional sports. So we could come out in in a year or so. They're like, here's what a player contract looks like. And we're like, oh, well, they, you know, they specify this differently. But assuming that they're at least similar, this is this is the frame uh, for for the conversation. And Trevor, do you think that there should be so between it and you're in a very unique situation where you uh, are with the Minnesota Twins. Um, you are, were with Luminosity Gaming um, a, as a streamer. Uh, I don't know if you're still still with Luminosity or not. You are. Certainly. So, so you're, 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 you've got a foot kind of in both camps in, in a lot of ways. Do you think that there is or there should be a difference um, with how you represent, as you said, Major League Baseball and... Um, and, and uh, the Minnesota Twins and baseball as a whole, and uh, how you represent uh, your your um, luminosity and honestly just yourself. Do you think that there are stark differences where it's okay to whatever flip off a camera <laughs> and it be okay and not punishable in one scenario, and then? Uh, you know, if you're <laughs> pitching and you strike a guy out and toss him the bird, you know, maybe maybe that's where consequences happen. I think they're, you know, a little bit, yeah, I, they're they're subtle. There's so much overlap, right? There's there's it the the cut and dry black and white like distinctions being made is next to impossible because it is very hard to know where Trevor May the personal brand starts and where Trevor may the baseball player uh, starts and where they're not, there's no overlap because they overlap so much. So um, for example, 
uh, uh, yeah, flipping the bird on the mound as opposed to the, the camera. Yes, the camera might not have any ramifications in terms of suspension or something on the baseball field because they are unrelated. But if that was then signed into a contract, then I would know about the consequences and therefore then it does become a consequence. And it's, it's, but as my personal brand in which I represent myself on the field and the way I just hold myself to the self safe con same code of conduct because it's safe. It's the, it's the only way to be sure. Right. right. So you, instead of trying to distinguish every single situation, whether or not, okay, yeah, this is fine. Cause it's only streaming. Like I, I you know, we were talking about before, uh, swearing, you know, I don't swear in interviews. Right. I know a lot of them are TV. I've actually been bleeped out before in an interview on TV once, which was horrifying. So, <laughs> um, and I was like 20. I'm just going to put like, a random okay. bleep into this interview uh, for some that great. sound. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I never did before, but obviously that's just kind of a general thumb. Don't swear in an interview because on TV, they're going to bleep you out anyways. So it's right. just going to look really bad. Um, you know, I swear a little bit more on my stream. I, I'm trying to not swear in general very much, but it is an element of who I am. I just kind of, I, I swear a lot. Um, it's part we of my did a whole podcast about that for a while. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, uh, I swear quite a bit and, uh, but I know that there's a line that they're probably like, eh, they'd rather not me swear than twins. But if it's not being pointed at anybody or actually like causing some sort of, uh, harm to another human being, then it's, it's really harmless. So at that point, I'm, say, I'm not going to worry. That's one of those weird things where you're like, probably shouldn't. All right, guys, I do apologize. We lost Trevor for a little bit, and he was on a roll, but then uh, we forgot where that roll was going. So um, I'm going to skip ahead just slightly into the interview. Um, sorry again. Um, something that you have kind of said, uh, it, we're, we're talking about this before uh, we started too, is, was kind of um, how there might not be uh, ramifications from y your team or your league, but there, there can be ramifications just uh, for your uh, prospects in, in general uh, professionally uh, going further, whether it's being signed to a new team or maybe being invited to speak at an Overwatch League Players Summit. Um, it, it's something that, uh, you know, you've kind of talked about too, is just because something isn't directly um, in, that that breaks uh, your contract, but there, there definitely is an aspect of um, when you're doing things publicly, it reflects on you as an athlete, as a person, uh, as a speaker. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, and again, that kind of goes back to the whole personal brand thing. Yes, you know, you might do something controversial that um, that doesn't get you a fine or doesn't gives you a slap on the wrist and people are just kind of uh, shaking their head at, for example. But maybe that's something that specifically goes against the ethos of an owner of a team. Now it is fully within their right not to give you a chance to ever play on their team because they decided that you're that type, the type of person they don't want on your team. Those are other consequences that are, that you don't see right away that could affect your your career going forward. And of course, you can't see every every one of those things, but there's some easy rules of thumb. You just say, you know, uh, you just try to stay on the on the safe side of things, and you try to. Uh, uh, I know a lot of this is going to go straight toward like to there are always problems that are happening on people's personal streams. I think that that's kind of what's constantly happening. Um, someone's doing something when they feel like they're in their own personal space when uh, thousands of people or hundreds of people are recording it or can watch the record later. Um, um, and, and, you know, and you're worried about losing kind of whatever makes your brand it's, itself because Twitch, you can find literally any personality on there anyways, crass or not crass. You know, um, um, one guy I follow is a pastor and he calls his group the Twitch church or church Twitch or something. And it's, it's great. He's a great guy, but like you can find anything and, and that's his brand. So now if he comes out swearing and stuff, no one's going to like, if he comes out saying some horrible stuff, um, he, it could really, really affect his brand in, in that way. If, if you think about it that way. So he's created this, this thing he needs to, to be. And if you want to be also a professional game, a player of a game that then 
uh, answers to ownership or or coaching and and management, then then what they care about matters as well, just as much as your streams. Um, and keeping those two things in mind instead of just the one um, is is important. So, um, you know, I. Uh, there, there's a, there's, there's something else I hear too. And I just want to touch on this really quick. It yeah. kind of just is a, is a side part of this question, but um, there's an element of, and I hear it quite a bit from defenders of, of these situations. And you just need to very, you need to keep in mind, keep perspective in mind that if, if something is done kind of with knowing about consequences, then at that point, like if you do something, you're like, I'm probably you know, if I say something like that, and maybe it just comes out, right? Um, but if I say something like that, there might be consequences, and then there are, then is then on you. Sometimes, sometimes you can't, also, you can't, you can't manage, say you say something you didn't think it was going to have, people weren't going to react to it the way that they did, and the people are up, up, out, up in arms about it in an uproar, um, you know, and there's, there's lots of stuff about, I mean, there's a lot of political stuff there in this way, but like they well, go we actually for... had something kind of similar to this. Uh, I don't want to yeah. cut you off, but but to illustrate something we've already had in Overwatch League is a uh, Houston Outlaws coach Ty Rong had tweeted out a meme oh, yeah. that had some uh, connotations that he had no I- no idea about because of like language barriers and, and, and gaps. So something that you know he didn't necessarily think he could get in trouble for. Um, he, but yeah, he did, and and a lot of people freaked out about it and then the the defenders of tyron where he didn't know but also it's not that big of a deal but at that point that 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 case that that argument that's being made is pretty much relevant because we are all entertainers and we have basically what we do is entertain i play baseball and if no one watched it i would not have a job that pays the way it does the goal is to get guys to play video games in the same way video games are very fun to watch other people play evidently Right, Twitch is the perfect evidence of that. That's why esports. That's why the numbers everyone talks about. That's where they are. Uh, Twitch and YouTube and all, all those things. People like watching it. So you're an entertainer. You're out there and you're playing, but you're competing for the enjoyment of them, right? Uh, you can say it's about you, but for the enjoyment of them. So what they care about matters. If they want to be up in arms about something, and and you didn't know about it, now you do. You apologize and you move on. But you don't say, "Oh, this is unfair." Um, you guys shouldn't think this stuff because that doesn't matter. What everyone thinks about you affects the brand of the brand of entertainment and whether or not you agree with it doesn't matter. It is your job now to fit within the frameworks and kind of stay within the lines that they create. That's just the fact that like, like I know I'm about to go there, but life is hard. Sometimes things are going to seem stupid to you. Be like, why, why is everyone so worked up about this? It doesn't bother me, but you need to accept the fact that it works a bunch of people up. And just say, hey, my bad. And 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 then know that that works them up and then move forward. Like there's a lot of pushback on this is stupid. I don't think this is a big deal. Whether or not it's a big deal to you or to a small group of people, it's what matters to the whole because it is an industry. It's an industry of entertainment and, and you know, what the majority of people are enjoying or not enjoying um, is important, um, whether or not you agree with it or not. My thanks to Trevor for stopping by on the show today. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at TrevMay65. I'll have the rest of the interview with Trevor tomorrow for tomorrow's episode of Overwatch League Daily. Coming up for tonight's matches, we have the Philadelphia Fusion taking on the Seoul Dynasty. Should be a great one. Then the Houston Outlaws taking on the LA Valiant. Should be another great one. Then the Boston Uprising taking on the Shanghai Dragons. That all starts at 4 p.m. Pacific at overwatchleague.com. If you like the show, make sure to subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, or your favorite podcast app of choice so you don't miss future episodes. You can also watch or listen to the show on the front page of winstonslab.com. You can also find links to everything at overwatchleaguedaily.com. And of course, if you have questions or comments for the show, email me, overwatchleaguedaily at gmail.com. My thanks again to Trevor. Uh, for stopping by, I'll be back with the second half of the interview for tomorrow for another episode of Overwatch League Daily. <laughs>